Welcome everybody, this is part 1 of a step by step vitrectomy. Part 1 includes introduction, how to focus and the trocar fixation. There is no financial interest. So to get a retinal view, we should have a viewing system like in direct of salmoscopy. The commands to viewing systems are the biome as shown on the left side and the recite as shown on the right side. The recite has a fine focus which is shown in red arrow and also it has an inverter which is in yellow arrow. The value of inverter is to make the image rare because the image is perceived like in direct of salmoscopy inverted. Also the recite has two lenses the yellow one which is 128 diopter lens which is use, used for wide viewing of the posterior segment. The other lens is the green one which is 6 diopter lens and it is a magnifying lens for macular viewing. The biome on the left side. Different types of lenses can be mounted inside the biome and instead of the fine roll focus in the right side there is a focusing wheel which is moving upside and downside to get a sharp retinal image. Also the inverter is shown as black one in the photo. The focusing steps using the list zoom of the microscope and then move the microscope down until paper reflex appears until we see a red pupil and then move fine biome or recite focus until we get a well focused retinal image and then move again the microscope downwards to widen the field of the view. When we are lowering the microscope, we are getting a wider field of the view. When we are elevating the microscope upwards, we are narrowing the field of the view to just the posterior bull. And then zoom again of the microscope if needed, but always magnification is accompanied with less resolution. After focusing, we are starting trocar fixation. The trocar has three markers. The first one is to be put on the limbus. The other two are at three and four millimeter from the limbus. In FIGX, we put the trocar at four millimeter. In pseudofigX and the FIGX, we are putting the trocar at 3.5 and three millimeter. Starting with the infertemporal one, which is for the infusion cannula, which is the first one to be put inside the eye, checking the infusion cannula, opening it to get rid of air and to make sure that the infusion cannula is functioning and then putting the infusion cannula inside the trucker which while it is off and then checking the infusion cannula inside the eye. We can check the infusion cannula with the light from outside by the eye or to put the light probe inside the trucker instead of the infusion cannula to see it inside the eye. After switching on the infusion cannula, we are starting to put the second trucker. The truckers are put in slanting position to make a valve-like incision inside the sclera, making an angle helping again to close postoperatively. The other two truckers are put usually at 10 and 2 o'clock. When we are moving the truckers horizontally, slightly horizontally, we can make upper manipulations easier. Then the three truckers are in place. What are the major risks in trucker fixation step and how to avoid and solve? The major disastrous risk is to put the infusion cannula supracroidal or subretinal so it will infuse fluid and make further elevation of the choroid and the retina. How to avoid this complication? Always be sure that the infusion cannula is inside the eye before switching it on, especially in suspected cases like Polus RD cases or associated choroidal detachment. And if needed, use the longest infusion cannula which is 6 mm inside the eye. What if this already happened? Then we are starting to solve this problem to avoid further complications. At first, try to insert the infusion cannula in another side where the choroid not detached and the retina not highly elevated, like putting it inferiorly in another sclerotomy. Or 
otherwise the cannula can be inserted in the EC as an EC maintainer temporary until draining the elevated cord or retina from outside and then insertion again into the appropriate trucker. In this case, when I put the infratemporal trucker, I found the infusion cannula not reaching inside the eye, so I decided to put the infusion cannula inside the EC as an EC maintainer and I make an outside drainage of the choroid and I now I am suturing it and after draining of the choroid then putting the infusion cannula back inside its infratemporal trucker. This is another case. While I was checking the infusion cannula inside the eye, I can't see it inside the eye totally. So I decided to remove the infusion cannula and to put the light probe inside the eye. As we see, we are pushing something inside the eye. We can see smoothly the light moving towards the inside of the vitreous cavity completely. Then I make another trucker incision to put the infusion cannula inside. But at first we also check the light probe inside the eye. When I checked the light probe is freely mobile inside the eye so it is now safe to put the infusion cannula inside this trucker temporarily. Now I am putting the infusion cannula inside this trucker but I can't finish my operation at this side because I need this trucker for my movement and for using my trucker light or indo laser. So I just forming the glue from hypotony and I putting the trucker inside the infranasal one and also checking it inside checking the right probe inside the eye. It is moving freely inside the eye. So it is now safe to put the infusion cannula in the infranasal quadrant without complications. After fixation of the infusion cannula in the inferonasal sclerotomy and then entering inside the eye, as we see, we are seeing now infratemporal at the site of the infusion cannula, the choroid is detached. So this is the cause for prevention of reaching of the infusion cannula inside the eye. And thank you.